Welcome to The Right Stuff. I'm your host, Caitlin Lindford. Today on The Right Stuff, it's all about our favorite tool for writing, the pencil. As far as writing instruments go, the pencil is a simple option, but as we will learn today, the pencil has a fascinating history and is more complicated than it seems. It is also instrumental to the way our educational system has developed. Over the years, the instrument that we used to write with have, has evolved in several ways. The pencil itself has origins that are prehistoric, dating all the way back to when chalky rocks or charred sticks were used to write on cave walls or animal huts. After that, the Egyptians used small lead discs for marking papyrus and then printed over their marks. The Greeks and the Romans followed suit with similar practices. The Aztecs, however, even used graphite as a writing tool. The instrument that we see as directly preceding the pencil was the Roman stylus. The stylus was a thin metal rod that would leave marks on papyrus. In the late 1400s, the earliest direct ancestor of today's pencil was developed. About a hundred years later, in 1564, there was a discovery of a large deposit of graphite in Borodale, England. This discovery allowed graphite to come into widespread use. Graphite acted like lead, but it was solid enough that it could be cut into sheets and then sticks. Graphite was able to leave even a darker mark than lead. However, it was brittle and soft and therefore required a holder. At first, the sticks of graphite were wrapped in, in string um, and that product was called a pencil. Eventually, in the late 16th century, graphite was inserted into hollow wooden sticks and the modern pencil began to take form. As the only pure deposit of graphite ever found, the Borodale mine was very valuable and well protected. Armed guards used to escort wagons full of the resource from the mine to the newly created Guild of Pencil Makers in London. The guild then created wooden cases for the graphite sticks and they were able to enjoy a worldwide monopoly on the pencil. In many ways, they were the Microsoft of their day. The English monopoly, however, could not last forever. The pen more people had pencils, the more they had ideas, and by the 17th century, the Germans were able to create a mixture of graphite, sulfur, and antimony that compared to the English version. As graphite became less plentiful, other mixtures were also developed. The modern pencil we know and love today was invented in 1795 by Nicolas Jacques Coté. Cote's process for manufacturing pencils involved roasting a mixture of water, clay, and graphite before encasing the, result the resulting solid in a wooden case. The finished product wrote as well as pure graphite. It was then possible to produce a harder or softer writing core by varying the proportion of clay and graphite. The more graphite, the blacker and softer the pencil. Today's hardness of a pencil is designated by numbers, with one being the softest and making the darkest mark. We will now go to our live correspondent, Max Powers. Live from your local high school, I'm Max Powers. By the end of the 19th century, pencils were found in basically all classrooms across the U.S. They had become more affordable, and much like computers today, were becoming cheaper and cheaper over time. At this point, they were also mass-produced, just like paper, and both more readily available, and as a result, they did eventually replace the school slate. This meant that for the first time, students could take permanent notes in class. With a slate, they could practice their reading, writing, or arithmetic, but they could not keep any of their work, and it forced them to remember whatever was important. With pencils and paper, students could now take their notes away with them to study further. This led to a decrease in the need for large amounts of rote memorization and very likely to a decrease in memory in general. We do not tend to remember things as well now that we know that we can access them again at any point when we need. Today's students might be upset to know that the pencil also allowed for the extension of the modern concept of written homework and revision as it allowed students to bring their schoolwork home. While pens would provide similar features in the classroom, pencils were vastly superior to fountain pens in terms of price and the fact that you did not have to constantly dip your utensil into ink. Not only are pencils cheaper, they also have erasers, making them the ideal tool for young writers who are just learning. Hello and welcome back to The Right Stuff. Today we're lucky to have our guest 
technology expert, Mr. Stan Still. Hi, thank you for having me. No problem. Um, so, pencils are really old. How can they be considered technology? Well, like the computer today or the telegraph in the past, pencils are in fact a communication technology. That is not to say the old ways are good. Not too, bi too many people miss writing on clay tablets. But pencils were and still are a practical technology despite their age. So earlier in the program, we learned that pencils were first created in Europe. Did we make any in North America? Well, good that you ask. At first, early settlers depended on pencils from overseas. Since their manufacture was a secret as closely guarded as a Microsoft computer code, with time and the, and the American Revolution, which cut off imports from Europe, pencils began to be produced in North America. William Monroe, a cabinet maker from Massachusetts, is credited with making America's first wood pencils in 1812. Okay, but pencils are so simple. Like, why would their production be such a highly guarded secret? The wood pencil may seem simple, especially in contrast to a computer, as it doesn't use electricity and has no moving parts. However, it too is an advanced technology. The common number two pencil is actually pretty complex. According to Henry Petrosky, an authority on history of the pencil making, the wood case pencil is a model of engineering process. A pencil builder needs to solve two vital problems. Blending graphite and clay so that the lead is neither too soft nor too brittle. And getting that lead into the wood case so that it doesn't break when, it sharp, when a writer sharpens the point or presses down on a piece of paper to write on it. Wow, that is pretty complicated. Yes, we tend to get used to the technologies of writing that we come to think of them as natural, rather than technological. We assume that pencils are a natural way to write because they are so old, even though they're actually newer than pens. Very true. So it still seems like a bit of a stretch, though, to compare a pencil to a computer. Actually, the development of the pencil is not at all different from that of the computer due in part to the way it was produced, and even the way it evolved over time. When the pencil was first introduced, it was expensive because they were hand carved one by one. Now that they have become more popular, you can buy them for pennies. Uh, they're produced, they're mass production. The same goes for a computer. The first ones were established were very expensive and very rare. Many new technologies go through the same developmental process. People strive to improve them coming out with new versions that have more capabilities and at a much lower cost. All right, all right, I think you've convinced me. Uh, but there couldn't be as much concern about introducing pencils into schools as there is now about computers with all the distractions and the concerns about screen time. Well, then you'd be surprised to hear that uh, there were even concerns with pencils. For example, teachers preferred pencils without erasers. Imagine that. This was because they thought it was better if students were able to get it right the first time. No erasing or crossing out. Wow, that is interesting. Now, teachers make sure that students revise their work uh, before they hand it in. It would be hard to find a pencil without an eraser. Yes, pencils help to change the writing and review process in schools. It also relates to another example when spell check first came out on computers. Teachers were reluctant to inform their students about it. They were worried that students would eventually forget how to spell. That is similar. Now teachers advise everyone to use spell check before they turn in their work and to erase their mistakes when they make them with pencils. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Mr. Still, for sharing all this information with us and hopefully you can meet back on the show soon. Well, thank you. I enjoyed my time and I look forward to coming back and discussing more about the wonderful world of pencils. Awesome. Some final thoughts on the pencil before we wrap for today. Pencils, like computers and other communication technologies, have evolved and improved over time. While we still use the conventional wood pencil, there are also a number of other pencil upgrades available. In the search for a pencil that didn't require sharpening, led to the invention which we normally term the automatic or mechanical pencil. 
These versions of the pencil has a metal or plastic case and uses lead that are similar to those found in the classic wood pencils. In 1858, Hyman Lipman patented his new pencil, which added a rubber plug to the end of his pencil. His pencil plus eraser patent sold quickly for about $100,000 or $2 million today. Ultimately, the, buy the patent didn't hold up, which is too bad because by the 20s, almost all pencils in America had erasers. In the early 20th century, there was de the development of colored pencils in which the graphite core was replaced by a combination of pigments or dyes and a binder. Today, there are over 70 colors. Thank you so much for tuning in today and taking in all the facts and important changes brought about by the pencil. I hope you tune in next week when we talk about the typewriter.